Okay, see. Hello and welcome to all of you lovely women who are curious about knowing a little bit more about supporting your lymphatic health. Thank you for sharing so generously your time today so that you can look at ways of proactively perhaps adding little things into your life that will support you to increase your health span as well as your lifespan. So today I have the amazing Margie here with me. Now, as you know, uh, for people who have followed me for a little while, I am South African. And part of that South African culture is that we tend to have less of a filter than Australians. And this means that we have an uncanny knack of really getting straight to the point uh, without sort of um, padding it out. And um, I really have one of my top values as honesty. And so therefore I conduct my life in a way that I want to share everything so openly and honestly with you. So when Rhonda said to me, Taryn, you need to meet Margie, um, she's South African, I didn't need to be uh, told twice, you know, you, you need to meet Margie. And uh, I met Margie and of course, when I met her, I just thought this woman has incredible wisdom. You know, we talk about crone wisdom where we've kind of really earned our stripes and our badges and just being able to sit and being able to absorb all Margie's learnings, her insights, her experiences means that I get to walk away, not having to have all of those personal experiences myself, but I get to put it in a bag and um, add that to my repertoire of knowledge. So without too much more introduction and fuss, I would like to introduce you to Margie. And Margie, I wouldn't mind if you could take a little moment and just give us a little history about who you were and what you did um, and all, you know, I know that there were awards and you were writing for things, and lecturing things in South Africa. So can you just give us a, a quick synopsis of who you were back in South Africa? Well, I suppose I should start uh, when I was seven years old and I fell out of a tree. Oh, and that's when I broke my collarbone, but nobody thought to look at my hips. So my hips from the age of seven, instead of being in the ball and socket, they were out. So we had this bone on bone happening from seven until I was about 21 and my hips were weird. They were just weird. They didn't open properly. But I mean, I was a crazy sportswoman, you know, I ran long distance running. I was an athlete at school. I played hockey for South Africa. I raced dragon boats for South Africa. So I, I didn't, it didn't impede. But when my hips started getting sore and they wanted to do a hip replacement at that young age, my father said, no way. And my mum took me to a German naturopath. And that's what started my journey of natural healing. But before that, I mean, from, from I think from the age of four, I was working in the garden with my mother. I had my own garden tools. So gardening has just been part of it. So I have this love for herbs um, and vegetables. So I'm not mad about the flowers. My mother grew beautiful flowers, but I do herbs. Um, and, and vegetables, organic, of course. Um, so that's been a passion of mine from very young. And my father, his domain on Sunday was the kitchen. He did the roast and woe betide if Sunday came and we didn't have mint for him to make the mint sauce. So I tended his mint from a very young age. So there was always fresh mint for the mint sauce. So those are just little things from my childhood. But um, following on from that, I suppose writing was just something I loved to do. And I had a, an amazing um, English teacher who he just seemed to be able to guide different people in different directions. So writing became second nature. I didn't find it difficult to write about whatever I needed to write about. So I have written a her book. And I have written a book on aromatherapy, which um, I was actually contracted to write. The herb book was my baby. And subsequently, I've because of my passion and love and my extended learning in terms of lymphedema. And what I found was lymphedema patients are not told everything they need to know. They go into their journey 
of cancer end up with lymphedema and told live with it. So I've written a very controversial book, which is called Lymphomation, What the Doctor Didn't Tell You. That's my book. And that book is, it's an e-book and it's, it, it just gets sold online. So um, that has been a very interesting journey. And my, um, I wouldn't even call it donation, but my voluntary work in this field is to offer free lymphedema consultations online, especially in the poorer communities who firstly don't have access to the right information. They don't have the money to pay for lymphatic drainage treatment. So my real speciality online, not in my clinic, but online, is to give people all the tools they need to look after their lymphatic system. So that's my passion. Well, that, that, that's choking me up. <laughs> Um, you know, first of all, what I what I absolutely love about you is uh, your uh, passion, and where passion is involved, you it, it's contagious. And you know, we we always have our job or our income or the way we earn money, but um, there's always an element of um, giving back to the community. And when you witness people doing that and witness that in action, particularly in areas of things like lymphedema that are poorly researched, poorly, people are poorly informed. In fact, Very. I would say that uh, most doctors um, haven't really covered it in, in their training. And uh, that has been my personal experience. And uh, my beloved is a GP as well. And so I have absolute veritable proof that um, yes, it's not really covered. But so you were really in, um, in you wrote for um, guest articles in the newspaper back home in South Africa. For 20 and, years. Yes. I had my own column, Herbs for Every Reason. It's just <laughs> wonderful, you know, just, just getting people enthused and educated um, and have a better understanding. You've also um, won an award. Well, that award was, a, it was just completely unexpected, just doing what I do, and it was, it was voluntary. Um, in South Africa, in KwaZulu-Natal, which was Natal in those days, um, was, was the, the heart of the Herb Association of Southern Africa. And there were no branches outside KwaZulu-Natal region. And this amazing woman, Joan, she heard about me, she kept, flew to Cape Town, and she said, would I like to start a branch in Cape Town? I said, I would love to. So with that, I did my diploma through the Herb Association of Southern Africa. And um, I started a branch and then another branch and then another branch and then another branch. And so we, by the time I left South Africa, we had 20 active branches in the Cape. And I was awarded that award, I think two years before I, I emigrated to Australia. Um, it was Herb Woman of the Year for education, for educating and opening these branches and lecturing and helping people to use herbs in a very responsible, knowledgeable way. Just so yeah. exciting. It was so you, so you have this amazing history mm -hmm. um, in South Africa, uh, creating change, impacting people's lives and living um, with passion. And then you come to Australia. And so sometime down the track, you then become unwell. Well, you know, when you when you emigrate to a new country, it's as though you've got a the slate is wiped. No one knows who you are. You've got no history. You have to start again. You have to reinvent whether you're going to follow the same journey or not. You can or you can't. And I had to make the choice: was I going to or was I not going to? And I couldn't because it would mean another three year study to get the equivalent or acceptable information that the government needed for me to practice as a herbalist which I couldn't um, so what I did is I, I the job that I got was sponsored migrant and in those three years while I was doing my sponsored duty I went back to to college night school and I studied and during that period an elective subject of mine was lymphatic drainage and it was at that college that my lecturer um, who was a little bit older than me, she said, you know, Margie, you're a mature student. I said, really? 
And she used a very kind word, mature student. All the others were like 18 and 19 and 20. And she said, you really have got really good hands. She said, why don't you consider making lymphatic drainage your specialist area, not remedial mass out, which you will not be able to continue because your hands will get ruined. And she said, there's, a, there's a, such a shortage in Australia of lymphatic drainage specialists. So I thought, why not? So I then studied um, under the Dr. Vodder School of Austria, and it was a two-year um, post-grad training, which I'm very pleased I did. It was, it was not easy, I must be honest. Um, I failed my second year, and I had to repeat it, so that's okay. <laughs> Look, the, the information um, is, is fairly extensive. I know that when I got diagnosed with lymphedema, the first thing I did was hop online to then do training in it. And um, to become one of the therapists, it was like I needed to have a science background in order to even be accepted. So I needed either science or I needed to have been a masseur before and have all that um, understanding. And I'm like, well, this is my body. I kind of need the full understanding because I'm an information junkie. So, you know, I don't want a little bit of information, just I need the whole dump um, and then I can figure things out. And um, yeah, so it's, it's really quite, um, uh, it's expensive training. Um, very, and it's very. really in depth and um, they don't have the near enough is good enough uh, mindset. Uh, you know, they only have um, superior outcomes as um, the benchmark. They're, they're actually quite strict. The Austrian school is very strict um, and they maintain that standard in that once you're qualified, you don't just automatically retain that. Every two years, you have to be assessed. Yes. And if they call it a review. So we review every two years to maintain our standard of practice. And, our, and I mean, it's a, it's a great review because we always have the very top species that comes in and he brings us up to date with the latest research. So we are up to date all the time, which is necessary in this field because it's a very important field not to get wrong because you can do damage, work in the wrong way or working with an old fashioned information or information that's not upgraded. So that's been really good, yeah. So you've come, you've retrained, um, and I, I, I don't want to dwell on the negative side of things, but I am really curious about you becoming unwell um, because I know that um, I became unwell in my 20s through what I think was a, a mosquito-borne virus, and that began my health journey with fibromyalgia. And I sort of, when someone else talks about being unwell... Can I just you, you there one sec? Are you going to edit this? Um, no. So we can't use it. You've used a disease. We're not allowed to publish it with a disease mentioned. Okay. So um, this this only goes back to um, people who have um, signed up. It doesn't go onto a public platform. Okay. I understand. Okay. Okay. No worries. Okay. So um, so I um, so I have a shared uh, health with fibromyalgia and I found it very difficult to get on top of having um, having energy, having motivation and having resilience. So when you talk about your, um, your experience of becoming unwell, you know, my heart goes out to you and, you know, I have that compassion. So, I mean, do you want to talk about any of that? or yes, did you just? I, I, I did become very unwell mm -hmm. and it was very difficult. And I think I, I still, even now, it was only three and a half years ago. So it was pretty recent. Um, I was bitten by ticks on the Northern beaches and we know ticks carry all kinds of bacterial um, diseases that can infect our blood. And this happened to me and I just got a cold, a cough, a flu, blah, and it just completely, it just got worse and worse. It didn't matter what the doctors treated me with, whether it was antibiotics, it didn't get any better. So I thought, well, maybe I'm just overworked. Maybe I just need a break. I did take a break. It didn't get better. I got worse. And I was actually living in France, looking after my friend's house. I had to come home. I went straight to Royal North Shore Hospital. And when I came home after being on an um, intravenous drip for four days and home on an oral um, antibiotic for another month, I got these phone calls from my friend Trish. 
She said, Margie, you've got to try this product. I said, listen, Trish, I'm not interested. I'm not well. I've closed the clinics. I'm not even working at the moment. Don't even talk to me. I haven't got any money to even pay for product. So forget it. Anyway, she phoned me three times. On the fourth call, she said, Margie, I said, listen, Trisha, I don't want to talk. She said, you don't have to talk. I'm talking, she says. She says, you know what? You're very stubborn. She didn't say very. She used a much stronger word, which I shall not repeat. She said, you're going to be poor for the rest of your life. You're not going to be able to go back to work. So have a good life. And she put the phone down in my ear. She didn't even let me answer. I thought, my goodness, have I lost a friend? What is going on here? And the penny dropped. I thought, my gosh. Here is a friend who knows me well, who's offering me a natural product, and I'm not even open to take a look or even try it. I picked up the phone, I phone, I said, give me that bloody stuff. Anyway, I started taking it, but not in a really good frame of mind. I was taking it to say, you see, it doesn't work. <laughs> but actually, after three weeks, I knew I was getting better. I was going to sleep and actually waking up feeling refreshed, not waking up like I was dead dog tired. I had a little bit more energy. The headaches were lifting. The brain fog was getting clearer. I hadn't worked on my computer for nearly six months because I, I couldn't comprehend it. it. wouldn't work in my head. And I opened the clinic after two, three, nearly three months later, I opened the clinic again. I started working. And I phoned Trish and I said, listen, you better upgrade me. I can't just eat, have this product and not introduce it to my patients. Because when you activate the NRF2 pathway, a whole lot of wonderful things happen in the body. And reducing oxidative stress, which is what happened why, when I was so ill, in by 40% in 30 days. That's why within 90 days, I was well on the road to recovery. And even though I noticed it starting in three weeks, at three month point, I was a different person and I hadn't been well for 18 months. So that's my little, little story of being unwell to feeling fab. And since then I'm, I'm fitter now than I was even before. And I race dragon boats and I paddle board and I'm, 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 I'm not 21 anymore, you know? <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't ever want to be 21 again, but I just want to have the energy of a 21-year-old. Well, I certainly have that. Mm. I, I can keep up with the best of them. I mean, in the dragon boats, they're, they're, they're girls from 21, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and more. And I'm one of the oldest in the boat, and I can keep up with the best of them. <laughs> That's incredible. I mean, I, I know that, um, you know, when I had a conversation with you, um, I, I started taking NRF uh, last October for my foot issues. And what I noticed afterwards, after about three weeks, was a clarity of thought, being able to yes. um, see patterns and relationships between things that after chemo I had lost. So, you know, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent and just ask you, because, you know, when you're looking after the lymphatic system, you know, people don't understand that, you know, the lymphatic system, it's not separate parts. It's all over your body. But we also have like a glial lymphatic system on our head. Um, and so when, um, you know, I found afterwards that, you know, after chemo, you have um, what feels like um, brain damage. Uh, a traumatic brain injury that, you know, I can't help but wonder about, you know, my lymphatic system being um, impaired in my arm, but it's still having an effect on my brain. And within three weeks on this product, I was able to have more clarity of thought. I had more energy to actually physically go out and do things like, you know, really work in the garden, even in the 30, you know, five degree heat. So, you know, what is this, you know, like when our NRF2, how does that support the lymphatic system? Well, uh, the most important thing is as we move through an, a normal life and a normal day, we are exposed to lots and lots of different toxic load that comes into the body, whether it's from the sunlight, whether it's from the air we breathe, whether it's from the toxins on, on the road, the, the fumes from the car filling up with petrol, the food that we eat, toxic waste is put into the body causing 
oxidative stress damage to the tissues every single day. And what happens from the age of about 20 in women and 25 in men, the ability to get rid of or neutralize the free radicals that are coming in and the antioxidants that we have to, to make that normal and neutralize them, it gets out of balance. So there's more toxic waste building up and not enough um, antioxidants to neutralize it. That is when things get out of balance. And when that load gets more and more and more, it builds up and then our body can deteriorate so-called the aging process but we don't need to age. We're all going to age, but we don't need to age with illness and disease. We can age with health and wellness. And by keeping that toxic load as low as possible, that's why your brain felt better. You felt more clarity. And that's why I was able, my cognitive behavior improved that I could work my computer again. Oh, computers sometimes, you know, I get on and I'm like, I've had this computer for how long and now all of a sudden I, I just can't remember what to how to, what to do next That's or it. how to do it or how to find an email within my email system I've been using for how many years I just sit there and I think this is just crazy um you it's unexpected um but it was really interesting because when we had a, a quick chat um when Rhonda introduced us you gave me some really powerful advice because when I had fibromyalgia, you know, I tried different things, I, I, you know, really researched and I got onto the right things, um, but I wasn't doing the right doses because I didn't realize that, you know, it wasn't just about choosing the right thing. It was also about having the right dose. And when I finally used doses that doctors here would not agree with back then, um, you know, like back then it was like 4,000 international units of vitamin D and, and doctors would roll their eyes at me thinking that was hideous. Whereas I know now recently in January when I had COVID, I took 50,000 international units a day. Um, you know, so, you know, things are changing. But um, yeah, so you gave me really great advice and I changed my dosing um, amount to three times a day. And um, I'm finding that my um the top of my arm my sleeve is now looser on the top of my arm so that is in a very short amount of time and you know like I would you know I'm really excited about that and you know and of course want to share it with people but um you know when you've had a lived experience and you have had something that you haven't enjoyed and then you have a solution and you're like oh was it that simple um, you know, you really do want to talk about it and share it with people. So do you, you do patients in your clinic use NRF1 and 2? Absolutely. Um, I would like to just use an analogy which will explain to your listeners how this very simple activation works. If you can imagine up in the loft, you've got your grandmother's old piano, which is a beautiful piano. And you go up the loft, says you dust off the piano and you start sneezing and you start to play and oh my word the piano sounds absolutely dreadful completely out of tune okay you get the piano down you clean it all up and you phone your local piano tuner and he comes in and he tunes the piano and all the notes are back in balance as they should be some have been upgraded, some have been downgraded, so that they form a harmonious, beautiful sound when you sit down and play. If you can imagine your body, when we activate our body, we activate our gene expression. Now, we have, the piano only has, I don't know how many keys, but our genes are over 5,000 genes, over. And this particular NRF2 that we are taking to activate takes care of about 500 genes. And those 500 can be either upregulated or downregulated, as the case may be, to bring that body back in balance so there's absolute harmony within the body. 
So that is what we're aiming for, to bring our body back in balance. So the body does what it's meant to do. And that is heal itself, which might mean reducing the fluid in the arm. It might mean clearing the brain so we can think clearly. All of those things are the side effects of just allowing the body to heal itself. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and it's really exciting because when you have a look at the ingredients on the jar of NRF2, those, those are like five herbs, you know, like there's, it's dairy free, it's gluten free, like there's, there's um, and, you know, when I chatted to someone who was a herbalist, um, and, the, and I said, well, how come, you know, you look at that amount, and you think, well, surely that's not a therapeutic amount of that herb. But from what I understand, it's the absolute perfect ratio, that synergistic blend of the perfect combination at the perfect amounts that has the maximum end result on upregulating or downregulating those genes. Is that correct? Well, what, what actually happens is they were looking, the scientists, for... Firstly, the right combination of herbs that gave the best activation of the NRF2 pathway in the body. That's what they were aiming for. And once they had those five ingredients, they then needed, as you so correctly said, the ratio needed to be correct, which is the patented formula, which still has, I don't know, 20 odd years to run the patent. That's why there's nobody out there producing a product. This is completely unique. It's the only one in the world that has a product that does this exact thing, which is why it is such exciting news for natural health and healing. So once those two were in place, people might say to you, oh, but I take ashwagandha. Oh, no, I drink green tea every day. And oh, no, I, I, do, I put turmeric on all my stews and in my rice and all of that. Here in lies the story. Our bodies taking individual items like that can only absorb so much on its own. So even though you might be taking a teaspoon of, let's say, turmeric, your body is not able to absorb one teaspoon of turmeric. doesn't happen. So when this formula is taken and absorbed by the body, it allows the gene expression from each and every single cell, it allows that inside the nucleus, which is where the cell signaling happens, that switches on and switches off, that's when the magic happens. Imagine someone knocking on your door. You sitting watching television. What do you do? You get up, there's a reaction. You get up and go to the door. That's what happens when we take this product. There's a reaction in the cell and things start to happen. That's what it is. So it's very simple. <laughs> it's incredible because I did the exact same thing. I am... Um... I said, well, I'm already taking all of that and uh, I don't need another product to take. Like my cupboard is filled to overflowing with jars of hope. Um, and, uh, you know, and I'm like, well, I'm taking those five things individually. Surely those five things individually are more powerful than me taking it at a diluted amount um, in, a, um, in a capsule or in a pill. But, you know, Margie, I'd been taking those other ones for a long time and I had more profound outcomes, benefits and um, good stuff happen within, you know, three weeks in terms of brain function. Um, but also, you know, like now taking more of it um, for the actual lymphedema after your suggestion, I've had more positive outcomes in the shortest period of time than all the time I was taking those other things. So it's, it, it, that's and a you know, you know what the science proves? The science shows that by taking this tiny little yellow pill, <laughs> we increase the reaction in our cells by 18 times, whether you're taking those individually, by 18 times more. So why wouldn't we? Take something that is 
non-toxic that is going to boost our activation in the body so to help us feel better so we can do more i mean how awesome is that i'm scanning I'm absolutely less. sold and you know what I, I really think it's very important that we um, people anyone who's listening understands we do not claim to heal cure mitigate any disease or any illness or any condition but what we can tell you and i will guarantee you will reduce your oxidative stress in your tissues by 40 percent in 30 days cumulative every 30 days you're going to reduce that situation so you are going to feel better and you will be able to do more and it doesn't matter what conditions you've got because all those conditions are going to just feel a little bit better. Well, certainly um, my back pocket feels better because I'm not buying five different jars of things and I'm not, you know, I don't have a cupboard full of five different pills. Um, yeah, so Margie, um, in terms of going back to some of your, your patients who have used it, um, they're using it for their lymphatic health and for lymphedema. You're working on their bodies. Are you seeing positive changes and differences in their limbs? Absolutely. The one, of course, we mentioned was the fluid. And the second thing, because in amongst those 500 genes, the one gene that it affects is fibrotic. It's a fibrotic gene that is affected. So when you are not taking this activation, your risk with a condition like fluid in the tissues is that fibrosis might form. And this is a prevention method, which is very important. And we all know that fibrotic tissue can be formed anywhere in the body. In the heart, it can lead to a heart attack. That we don't want. So it can, and I mean, up here in the brain, of course, that's when a stroke happens. So we don't want any of those more serious issues to plague us. And in one of the research documents, it says it's the biggest breakthrough in medical history. And yes, it is for the prevention of disease in the future. We didn't say that. That's what Washington State University said. So but it's quite incredible because when you get onto PubMed um, and, you know, when I want to talk to my beloved about, um, you know, sort of anything, I always need to front up with studies that speak in the language he understands. And so in terms of PubMed, it's not very often that you actually get a product being mentioned, um, which is which is quite astounding. And it gives a lot of credence to then disseminating that information to to people who are medical. Exactly, exactly. But you know what I really think is also important for any of your listeners? It's all very well to, to do and follow a few things that we've said, but it's all about the bouquet of life. If you're not going to be making good food choices and you're not going to be exercising, if you put in place good food choices, exercise, drinking quality water, getting the right amount of sleep at the right time. If all of those are in your bouquet, that's a win-win. Then when you take your activation, that's the cherry on the top. But it's no point in taking the activation and thinking, oh, it's going to fix all. Because forget it. You need to emotionally and physically make the necessary lifestyle changes to commit to that improved better health. That's what I feel. Do you think, Margie, like for someone, like sometimes people are so bogged down and they're feeling so dreadful um, because of their toxic load um, that, you know, to make all those changes can be really difficult and tricky. You know, I've started these, um, my, my kids and my husband on this, and, you know, one of the benefits being that if I know that I've got that working with me um, in helping them, once they start to feel better, they can then start making better choices in those arenas that you're talking about. So, I, you know, I sort of feel like, you know, you, it can be used at the beginning part of someone's journey to help get them it's, going. It is supporting their ongoing yeah. improved health. Absolutely. 
nail on the head. But I also feel that any any of my clients who have, and I call it tried for a month and say it doesn't work, even though I warn them to take it for a month is a joke, don't even waste my time, don't waste your money. You need to take it at least for three months because it takes 90 days for glutathione to build up in the body. Glutathione is made in the body and it's the master antioxidant. So why would you take it for one month and say it doesn't work when you haven't even given yourself the chance to actually allow that restore and repair to take place? So that, that I think is also important. People need yeah, to yeah. And I mean, it's, it's not um, it's not a, a curative thing. You know, the body is being activated to do something. Um, and after a while, if you're not taking the body goes back to how it used to be. So it's it is 14 days, 14 days yeah. to revert back to the toxic load it was before. Because the 40% in 30 days is human, happens all the time. Yeah. As soon as you stop taking it, the toxic load builds up. So I was just reading because, you know, sometimes, you know, you start taking things and um, I'm a bit gung ho and I don't, you know, sometimes I just want to get into something. You know, and then I'm like, oh, I've just read, you know, it's better to be taken at the same time every day. It's better to be taken with some fat because that increases its bioavailability. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. But that's that's the NRF1 pathway. Not, oh, okay. It doesn't affect the NRF2 pathway. Okay. So you just need the fat with the NRF1. Mm. Okay. And once the NRF1 is open, how easy, you know, when it's closed, how difficult is it to be for NRF2 to be absorbed? Once you've opened that NRF1, whoops, and it goes, it's absorbed much more quickly. It's just, it's just, it's just fascinating because I, I actually uh, saw the, the link of um, the film on um, the ABC, that's the American Broadcasting Network, in um, 2005, and it actually has footage of the actual scientist and then the journalist who was testing the product out before it was the catalyst for everyone to um, do studies on it. Um, and it was just, it, it really was quite a profound thing to watch, um, especially now, how many years later, knowing how many lives it's changed and the advancements that have been made. And that journalist is still taking the product. And he looks younger now than he did when he did that thing. <laughs> well, that was, that was incredible looking at really? his um, blood samples and they talk about, um, you know, his oxidative stress levels. They did it pre-taking the tablets and post as well. So that was um, quite something, yes. So um, I'm just looking at the time and I know that there's going to be people who are going to want to ask questions. So is there, if uh, there's, I'll just... Uh, look in the chat. Um, Lucy's got a client, so she's raced off. Uh, Madeline said thank you so much um, and for the valuable information. Um, if anyone wants to ask any questions, um, would you be open to answering anything, Margie? Absolutely, yes, no problem. Super. So um, just unmute if you want to do if you want to ask questions. Else, um, if, I think someone's unmuting. And I think I had put, some, um, yeah. So is that you, Donna? Have you taken yourself off mute? No, okay. So um, thank you for everyone coming here today. I'm just like, Margie, I could actually talk to you for a very long time because you, you know what you're talking about. You know kind of the experience that I'm probably going through with lymphedema. Um, in town, so we don't have a lot of practitioners who really fully understand um, lymphedema and lymphatics. So it does always feel wonderful when you meet someone who has a, a grasp on these things. I am very um, grateful for the generosity of your time today. Trish does send her apologies, everyone. Um, she had uh, an emergency to attend to with um, uh, some health stuff with family members. But um, so, you know, we can always get that story later down the track. If anybody wants to um, know more information uh, about the product that Margie has spoken about today, just pop a one in the chat and um, we'll make sure that we follow up uh, and have a conversation with you afterwards. And um, 
if uh, if no one's got any more questions, we'll just hang around. I'll stop the recording in a minute. And um, if no one's got any more questions, we'll just sort of say goodbye to everyone. I'll just say goodbye on the, on the recording now. <laughs> So what I would like to say to every anybody who's on the call or knows anybody with lymphedema is get them to talk to Taryn about that product. But also, if you are able to get into a swimming pool every single day and do 20 minutes of swimming, doesn't matter if you don't have a lymphatic drainage therapist in the area, swimming will do the job as long as as you put on your compression garment within 20 minutes of getting out of the pool. That's my top tip today. Could you wear your compression garment in the pool, Margie? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> because what you want, you want the pressure of the water on your skin that pumps the lymph. Okay, super. Um, I'm a little bit distracted. My beloved has come home and has fired up the coffee machine in the background. So if, I, if I'm kind of looking like a hair in spotlights, I'm like, oh, dear, stop making a noise. Um, I'm recording. Oh, wonderful. So I'm going to stop the recording there. Okay, thank you so, so much. Lovely to be on with you. And Taryn, thank you for inviting me to be 